tracking of unread messages up here. I can see how many read people are pasting in images because we're talking about UI design in this particular channel. Um, and I'm going to do a demo search. I'm just going to reconnect to the to the TriCaster because I think it'll be a lot more effective. Okay, try try that and see. If You'll you see. Can. I bet you it's going to work. Everything always works eventually. Um, the idea is that you get all the yeah, there we go. yeah. If you're familiar with IRC, this is really simple. So the people who yeah. are listening to this who know IRC, there's a list of channels down the left side here. The ones that are bright white means that I have some unread messages. We don't show you the number because that's just going to stress you out. We will show you a number though if someone's mentioned your name or sends you a direct message because that means they want to get your attention. Got it. Um, we track that where you are, kind of like the way a Kindle does when you, when you change from your phone to the actual physical Kindle. It says you're on page number 197, you want to switch. We do that um, at the level of all of these individual conversations for everyone. So this is a competitor to maybe Yammer or Chatter now, right? Yeah, there's, well, it depends how fine-grained you get. You know, like for us, it's a, it's, or a we have like this super high resolution thing where because this is real time, it's, it's fairly different. Um, and there's some differences between them, but Yammer ends up a lot more like uh, Facebook for inside of a company. It's more about profiles and newsfeed rather than real-time conversations. Corey just posted this uh, mock-up of the um, the mobile um, design for the finish of the sign-up process, and so I can click on it and have a look um, and respond to him live. And that's not something that I mean that's something that you would do in a more asynchronous fashion with yeah. something like Yammer or Chatter. But this is live. This yeah. is like there's yeah. people working with you right now. Yeah. And you see it as a stream all the all day long. Yeah, and you have a bunch of streams. That's where the channels correspond to. Yeah. So we have one for bugs and one for all the people sending us tweets, and we have one for every ticket that gets created in Zendesk. And that's the other thing is um, Slack is designed to integrate with all these other services. So superficially, it looks like it's a messaging service, and it's something that you would slide in it as a replacement for IRC, um, or as a replacement for, you said, Skype chat, um, or as a replacement for HipChat, or something like that. Um, the, the direction that we're trying to go with this, though, is actually a little bit different. And messages are important for us because they're an important thing to index for search. Before you join Microsoft, um, you used Microsoft products. I'm just making this yeah. up, but I'm sure that all of them. No, I used Outlook. Yeah, you yeah. yeah. so yeah. use Outlook, and the people you work with use other. You know, so obviously the Office Suite. Maybe someone, depending where you work, use MS Project. And at, for my company, we had MS Project wired to Outlook with VB Script to do tasks and stuff. And all of it worked together. And you can say what you like about whether it was good software or not. Um, it's definitely true that today there's a lot of better software than what we had 10, 15 years ago. Um, and it's also true that there's a lot of choices. So for every yeah. product category, no, I name, you know, name three choices. You know, uh, yeah. Yammer, Chatter, Convo, Podio, right? Yep, there's, there's for been sure. A bunch of companies in the last seven years. A bunch years. of those, and but also the same thing's true for bug tracking, for project management, and for, for categories that didn't even exist 15 years ago, like That's application true. performance monitoring. Um, a lot of alerting, mobile crash reporting, um, a lot of business intelligence and marketing and analytics stuff that didn't exist. So now, for every startup um, and, and big companies too, there's like maybe a half dozen or a dozen or, or 20 different services that you use to get your, your job done. And that, you know, like GitHub for your source control and Zendesk for support tickets and Jira for bugs. Or, and you know, again, many, many options there. So we, with 21 people on the team, send about 2,000 messages a day that are written by a human being and hit enter. There's also about 7,500 messages that come in a day from computers. So just like you get a lot of email from computers. You want, we, uh, no, like I just wondered, I, it, like I'm on the marketing team, I don't want to see all the bugs that go to the development team, right? right? So you just I say I'm on that channel. I want to be able to pop in there and see bugs or report bugs, mm -hmm. but I don't want to get flooded with it. So you, you, it's almost like having separate uh, chat channels for each Yeah, it is. I mean, they're literally channels. And we call them channels in deliberate homage to IRC. But also, and this may or may not be a good idea, but the idea of like a TV channel. You know, like you can be tuned into many of them at, at once, um, but there's just something on that channel. There's engineering talk on this channel. There's a, a suite of messages about um, 
code check-ins and deploys in this channel. On the other channel, there's a more philosophical discussion about product direction and new features you want to develop. And you know, yet another channel, um, there's mobile crash reports and whatever. So everyone in the company is in a different subset of all the all the channels. So let's say I want to use that with our little small social media team, mm -hmm. which is like, I don't know, 10, 15 people at this point. Um, how do I, uh, I, I'm going to bring, bring this into Rackspace, so I download it. It, no, it's not a downloadable thing. There, it? There's um, uh, apps for iOS and for Android, and there's a Mac desktop app, but also um, just a web client, so you can just go okay. to the web page and, and type it in. So I start a Slack channel or two, one for maybe uh, you know, talking about what's going on on Twitter and one about you know, product feature requests you know, yeah. that we might want to give. Uh, do I add those people to to this group so they know about it? Or, yeah, or so do I mean, Rackspace just... is, is a pretty big company for us yeah. to have as a customer. We're well, it's just focused on my group 15. Yeah, yeah, sure. So that's yeah. that's perfect because we're designed for teams, uh, yeah. and you guys are a team. And, the, and they're inside of plenty of big companies like um, Adobe and PayPal and Citrix and stuff like that. There's multiple teams using Slack that are, that are separate from each other. You would say, set up your team, say anyone with a Rackspace.com email address can sign up, assuming that's what you guys use for corporate email. Mm -hmm. You might tell them about it, you know, however you communicate with them now. Email or Yeah, or so they sign in, or... they can go just on the, on the web page. Um, they get a lot more value if they install the app as well. And then either you get to the point where when you're going to send someone a message, um, this is how you send it, or it fails. It's really kind of an all or nothing Product is not going to work if half of the people are on it because, like, you, then you get in the situation you got you have something to say, you want people to see it, and you know that if you send them an email, they may be buried in other stuff and they may not be responsive, but they will see your email that you sent them because it came from you. And that's, but you've been growing ten to twenty percent a week, so yeah. obviously somebody likes this, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's it's definitely working, and um, yeah. it, it's interesting. How fast we've been able to grow? Because this, it's actually I did a, a, I made the graph and I mapped it onto to Flickr in the early days. And it's not really a fair comparison because there's so many fewer people on the internet. Yeah. But just in terms of the rate of growth, the percentage, like what the curve looks like, um, we're growing faster than Flickr ever did. Like at, yeah. no matter even at the very fastest points. Um, uh, yeah, you it's sort resonant. of expect the expectations in this industry have changed because of Twitter and Facebook and yeah, Google Plus and LinkedIn. Yeah, totally. Right, we have the ability to tell a lot of people what we're seeing or experiencing, and so you know, yeah, it's I not get something you can. By tool, and then I tell everybody all of a sudden, you know, uh, six million people potentially know about it, right? Yeah, yeah, and like we hoped that that would happen. You can't bank on that. Um, you know, try to design a product that makes people. You know, moves them to exclaim, "Wow, this is pretty good!" And and this is the fundamental difference when you have Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. To me, especially Twitter. Yeah, I've um, been watching I, your tweets come in, and people yeah, are loving it, right? Yeah, yeah, and it, that's happening all day, every day. If we have a we have a referral program. You get a hundred bucks if you if someone signs up and they end up paying. They get a hundred dollar credit on their account when they sign up with your referral link. So that's, if you refer me, do I get? Do yeah, you get I'll, the give you bucks? Bucks? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you whatever. You're buying you dinner tonight. Then. <laughs> But I mean, that, and that's something that's been happening forever, right? Like I, businesses have been doing that for a long time. And if I know that if I was on the receiving end of that, yeah, I would think really hard about who I would send the email to. If it was if it was an email driven thing, if I had to put in someone else's email address, yeah. maybe I'd send it to one or two people. If I thought it was really important, and I had maybe already talked to them about it, and it was like it was okay to send the email. But no one has that kind of compunction about sending a tweet. You just like. You know, th we're using this. Yeah. It's working great. I'll tweet, and maybe 300 people see that. Maybe 8,000 people see it. You know, in some cases, millions of people. In other cases, hundreds of thousands. And that's something that just didn't wasn't possible before. Like you could not have purchased that. You could not have made it happen. No how. Like the, until there was at least Facebook, but at least you know all these people connected to each other. Even even in the early days of blogging, right? Like. Um, yeah. Let's stay stay focused on the tool. Yeah. What uh, what are you seeing people say? Why why are they tweeting about your tool? What what is it that it really changes about their lives? So where where Just we think um, the value is is bringing all this stuff together, which wasn't together before. That's why that's why I brought up all these different vendors. 
the side effect of that is your information gets siloed into all these different places. I say siloed, it's not anyone's fault. It's not malicious. It's, you know, uh, Zendesk doesn't have any interest in keeping support information away from Jira where your task management stuff is going on or, or Asana versus, you know, whatever. It doesn't, you know, everyone is just trying to provide the best service that they yeah. can. But then when you're trying to find a piece of information a couple of weeks later, um, it can be really tough. So I'm gonna, I made a Google Doc here. You're yeah. gonna think of a funny word, and I'm gonna type it in. So you, a wanna, funny word. A funny word, um, or the, even just a word or phrase. Flock, that right? Yeah, flock. <laughs> There's a good one. So I'm gonna take us back, and this is something that we did early on a lot. Um, uh, is pass around because we use Google Docs. Uh, here you can see all my my personal Slack bot messages, yeah. uh, and we paste a link to each other. So K, here I, I wrote this back. Can you check it out? So if I hadn't ever done this before, um, Slack would prompt me, hey, do you want to author your Google account? I've already done all that. So yeah. it just went and created a document inside of Slack. And this is pretty boring, because here's the doc. Yep. Um, and uh, I can type a comment in there, and I can star the file so that I can find it again later. If I click on it, it'll just open back up in Google Docs. But now here's the cool thing. I do a search for the word flock. Oops. Yep. Uh, and. There it is. It finds that even though it's in the body of a, a document that's not even inside of Slack. So that's, that's cool. what we're trying to do. If I want to, you're talking about the, the tweets. If I were, search for the word awesome here and then say from Twitter, yeah. um, I can find all these messages um, that were posted into Slack via the Twitter integration. Wow. Um, if I want to search our bugs for the word alignment, so every bug that's ever been created that mentions the word alignment, uh, you can see them here. We also, this is kind of weird for a lot of people, I bet, uh, but we use SVN for source control for the main application. Here's every SVN code check-in that mentioned the word alignment. Wow, so it's awesome. everything. It's the tweets. It's every point of customer contact. It's every bit of like uh, planning that we do. So when how much does this cost per person? This is it's eight bucks per user per month or eighty per year. So it's six sixty-seven per user per month. Do you have a month. free? Uh, we have yeah. It's totally free. Um, for unlimited users, unlimited time, but your message archive is limited to the most recent 10,000 messages, so the search will be constrained to that. So you can, basically, you can kick the tires for as long oh, as you, you want. You learned a few tricks at Flickr. Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's funny. <laughs> we were thinking about all, how we wanted to do it and all these different alternatives. And by the way, you know, I'm joking around with the Flickr Pro. That's if, if you don't if you if you don't pay for Flickr Pro, uh, it, the search. Yeah, I don't even. Work. Yeah, I don't think that's true anymore. Like that. But, oh, really? but that that's that was our plan back then, and that worked pretty well. Yeah. Um, and there's a limit on the number of integrations you can set up because we limit it to five, which sounds like maybe it's a lot, yeah. but you don't. People use so many services, so many, like you know. There's. Yeah. Um, I don't Do you know. have a good sense of what tooling people are using to build companies? Because um, of this? Well, you know, we have. Uh, I'm not sure if we should reveal it publicly, but we have a pretty good list of of the uh, I don't know several thousand teams that are using Slack at this point. We have fifty thousand daily users. Um, we have a list of all the integrations that they set up. If I go to one of these channels, um, like here's our QA channel, and I wanted to add a service to it, I would go click on the menu and then choose um, add a service integration. And these are the ones that we've built in. So AppSignal is metrics for Ruby apps. Um, Asana, obviously, you know. Yeah, we're actually them. interviewing them in a couple weeks. OK, cool. Um, Bugsnag, Codeship, Crashlytics, which is a Twitter company, Dropbox, Google Drive, Hangouts. Help Scout, Jank. I mean, this is like this huge list of services that you can just press, uh, you know, a button, and and you get your messages from Stripe uh, for all your payment stuff flowing in there. You can see when you make a new sale. You can see when a credit card gets oh, declined cool. or whatever. Whatever. And these are just the ones that we built. There's another couple hundred that have built by the community. And obviously, this is really important to us. We're investing a lot in, in platform development. And it's like take whatever kind of objects the business has in a broad sense. Reduce them to lowest common denominator kind of message, just like you get an email about you have a new follower on Twitter or your, yeah. your check image is available for viewing or whatever. Um, put the link to the object in the message, put it into Slack, and now it's searchable. And all that stuff is searchable. So when you come to, you're doing a piece of writing, and you remember the stat that someone told you that was in an article that was sent to you three months ago give up hope, like you're never going to find it again because maybe it was an email or maybe it was, depending on what kind of tools you use, it could be in any one of a dozen different places. Yeah. Once you get this set up, and it's not, it's not simple, I'm not, you know, it's not like just like in, install the app and you're done, um, but once you get everything set up and the team is using it, everything 
everything is searchable. Everything is in one archive. All of like the knowledge of the company is available to every new employee you hire. And that's that's why people that's are really tweeting cool. about it. Is there a way to do private stuff? You know, if I, if I was working for you and yeah, I wanted so, to just talk to you and not everybody else? Yeah, there's um, there's uh, 